Hi good people, I am very excited. Bado tuko na panel yetu na tunazungumza the present and the future of HR. As you remember last week tumeongea interviews, talent attraction and recruitment in general. Na leo tuna specialize kwenye emotional intelligence as well as uh, the future and present of um of uh, HR. Na nilishia na swali ambalo I want to bring back. I am not very pleased na watu kumuliza mtoto wangu, Graham as you know him, 6 years old. Kwa wewe unataka ukikuwa mkubwa, we nani? I feel kama that question is limiting. Lakini ningependa kujifunza zaidi kutoka kwa specialist wetu, the one and only cognitive psychologist in Tanzania. Alright, guys. Over to you. Hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> okay, I sent you a lafo. So Obviously, to answer it very plainly, that is a very limiting question because unajua mtoto ubongo wake uko very open. Eh? Whatever you feed, that, that's also what is creating the adult and ataikuwa. So, ukiwa kila siku na mambia mtu, we utakuwa doctor, ukiwa utakuwa doctor, au mtu amekuwa kwenye family ya doctor, zaki ulizo, utakuwa nani, atakuwa doctor. But, in reality, that is not their real passion. So, ukija kwenye emotional intelligence, of course, this is something we get as adults, not as children. Plainly speaking, that is limiting. Children should not be told what they want to be, especially when dunia yetu leo. Lakini, emotional intelligence is something we come to master, few people come to master at 25 and above. It's not something kwamba, I mean, ni something nikitu ambacho unaendelea kuki perfect. But you can only achieve that level of emotional intelligence after because emotional intelligence ni nini? It's not kwamba hauna emotion, hauna control emotion, which is what people normally think is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is just being aware of what emotions are. Mm -hmm. That is all. So, tofaute emotional intelligence and cognitive intelligence, ambao kawaida mtakwa mmesikia na IQ. This is the intelligence ya kusoma, ya kufikiri, ya kuandika, ya ku... Ya ku decision making, all those things. Lakini, binadamu kama binadamu, emotions are what drive us. It is what it's instinctive. And it's what makes us the same as wanyama. If I can put it simply, no offense. <laughs> Cognition is our higher level of understanding, our thought process. Iyo cognition do inakufanya sasa uwe emotionally intelligent. Kwa vile, emotions mwilini, Ziko exactly the same. Ukiwa unasira, ukiwa umefurai, ukiwa excited, ukiwa umeumia. Kwenye mwili wako haujui. You have the same symptoms. Uh, moyo utapiga raka, mikono itatemeka kidogo. It's kichwa chako ndo kita kuambia unafeel kitu gani. Na kutokea na context uliyomo, na jinsi gani ulivo jizoesha maisha yako, ndo utagiambia that's what you are feeling. So nda a very small example. Mtu ambaye anaogopa public speaking, for example, ndo amesha fika hiyo situation where they have to now stand up and give a presentation or what not. Akisha kuwa anaitua pale, anatetemeka, ya ni anaisi kama anaanza kufa, mtu anaona kama anapata panic attack. Ushona, na ile narrative alozoya kujiambia, narrative is just story. Ulozoya kujiambia, ya kwamba mimi I'm so bad at this, I'm so bad at public speaking. So you need, in, it keeps feeding into your brain. Unajua ubongo wa ujue, sisi tunachokiona, ndo tunachoambia, ni kama computer. What you type in, it delivers. I want to open this picture, picture opens. That's, that is your brain, essentially. So hile unavuongea vile kwenye kichwa chako, kile kichwa chako unachu kina deliver. Kwamba unaogopa how you, you are very bad. What is the consequence? Ukifika pale, unabom. Maneno ya toki, alafu, unaconfirm. That is how habits zinakuwa formed. Unaconfirm to your brain kwamba kweli, you are bad at public speaking. So every time, this comes up, that, active, that small place in a activator. Unakua kama una specialized department kwamba wewe ni bad at public speaking. So every time neno to public speaking comes up, I'm so bad at it. Whereas, your same emotion will feel, ukikona jambia, this is so exciting. Because it's the same thing in your body. Hamna kitu kilichobadilika, you will have a very different experience. So on Jawapa, also an example of a study that then maybe we can apply going forward. There was a very big study in Lefanyua, London Bridge. Kuna vijana wengi walikusanya. Atu not vijana, wanaume of different ages. Waka kwa separated into two groups. Waka pelekwa uh, to cross that London Bridge. And they were very, very high. It was a stormy day. Mvua, yani ilikuwa tosios kunzuri. 
mmoja akawa anapelekwa na middle age men huyo tourist guide alikuwa middle age men tu mtu wa kawaida huyo wa pili alikuwa very hot young woman unaona ndo anawapa hiyo tour au vijana au, au wanaume after they had the same exact experience after wakaulizwa to rate their experience and explain how they felt obviously you can imagine what was the response wale ambao walipelekwa just a random middle age men they said it was a horrible experience they were scared for their life hawataki tena kufanya hicho kitu in their whole life wale walipelekwa with a young hot woman they said it was incredibly exciting they felt a thrill they said it was so much adrenaline yani they use all those words which obviously it's not they were scared that's the reality lakini because there was a hot woman i may attribute kwamba i'm excited because of this person in front of me so to get naongelea emotional intelligence again i repeat sio kwamba wewe una ability ya kucontrol sasa hivi i'm not feeling angry no una ability tu ya ku stop to remove yourself from a situation and say what am i feeling and why that is all those are the only two questions you have to ask yourself and that comes ukiwa wewe mwenyewe which is the first domain ya emotional intelligence and that is self awareness so mwanzo tuliongelea kuhusu uh, mtu kujijua strength and weaknesses kujitambua watu wengi wajifanyii SWOT analysis mnafanya tu makampuni sijui what is the threat what is your strength nini opportunities kila mtu anatakiwa ajifanyie i do uh, SWOT analysis every year and very very openly these are my weaknesses because unajua ukishajitambua where you are weak no one no one in this world can move, yani can shake you because you're open about it hata kazini kuna kitu unajua i'm weak in this area you will find a way sasa you've identified right this is what i can't do so you'll find a way to work towards it i'm weak in writing you'll find a way to work towards it or you will fit yourself in a role or you will overexcite your strengths kama unajua i lack in this area i will do my very very best in this area while trying to fix this sasa mtu kuna watu wengi yani wako naona maofisini yani mtu kwa sababu ampata kazi ndo ampata kazi yani i'm going to do my bare minimum and it's not about self development it's not about self management alafu pia mliongelea uh, before kuhusu watu yani ile motivation ile pushing inakuwa second domain which is self management sasa you cannot motivate yourself if you can't manage yourself and part of managing yourself in a build na ile kwamba unajitambua ukishajitambua sasa unaanza kuwa na kitu kinaitwa intrinsic motivation not extrinsic motivation extrinsic motivation ni vitu kama mshahara benefits so, yani something motivation ambayo inatoka nje intrinsic motivation ni motivation inayotoka kwako wewe mwenyewe why are you waking up in the morning to go to this job kama kungekuwa kuna watu wanajiuliza maswali tusingekuwa na watu waliosema mimi nimesoma tu kwa sababu ndio ilikuwa yani ndio opportunity ilo present because ungekuwa tayari ushajitambua kwamba this is not something i want because sababu kwa ukijiuliza swali why i'm waking up that job is not coming up as an answer you are waking up because of many other reasons but not that job it means you're in the wrong place in the wrong field at the wrong time yani it's part of people finding their purpose and i think pia yani as hr professionals easy training is very very important kwa sababu pia ina join na purpose ya kampuni tuliongelea ulivyokuwa unaongelea organizational culture one word kept coming up because the ultimate goal of having organizational culture is to bring together the purpose of the employee and the purpose of the organization if hamna hapo alignment you will yani mfanya hata umpe what kind of incentive hata umpe unajua binadamu kila tukifika level fulani tunaitaka ile goal tukifika we are ready for the next step we really want to make 50 million this year ukishafikia 50 million you already at 100 because in the process tayari ulikuwa umeshabadilisha lifestyle ya mtu anayetengeneza 50 million so unaangalia the next goal the next goal but pure satisfaction inakuja when you have purpose and the way to build purpose kwenye inakuwa kwenye hiyo organizational culture mpaka mtu wa chini anatakiwa ajue what they are working towards and that kwamba kitu anachokifanyia kazi kina affect mtu au kina affect the bigger goal ya kampuni asa kama mtu anakuja anafanya data entry Hailewi why anafanya data entry it's a very redundant job not lying i don't think any one of us here wants to sit all day just putting in information it's a robotic job to be honest sasa kama yule mtu hajielewi kwa nini anafanya ile kazi na inasaidiaje on a grander picture in a bigger picture inasaidiaje hiyo kampuni he's very unlikely to be motivated ata muongezee mshahara kiasi gani yani ata ndio atakuja asubuhi akiatapiga story akienda lunch na kama saa matatu yani kuja pale kwenye hicho kikubiko is just ah Ume, yani unanitesa to be honest then ndo unaenda kwenye sasa hivi vitu kama social awareness which a very big part naongelea kila siku 
I think what Tanzania is where we lack the most, unfortunately, is something called empathy. Yani, hatuna, we don't know what it is to begin with. Udaenda, mimi kaya siku nikenda mazikoni. My heart breaks, to be honest. Every single time. Obviously, it's a very sad environment. Mtu amekufa, it's a very... Lakini, unona how many people wanaji impose their perspective na wafiwa. Kwa wafiwa. I find that very wrong. Mungu ndo alivopanga, vumilia. Why? Who asked you? A lot of times, ukimwana mtu aliafiwa, and they are grieving. They don't really need your opinion. They don't need you to affirm to them kwamba anaumia. Because anaumia, you know? They don't, need them, yani they don't need you to tell them this is what you should do. Sis, tuko very quick to advice. Everyone can give you advice no matter what problem you're going through. Mtu yote, yani anyway, unaza kutawana mtu supermarket anakuambia. Unajua, unatakiwa saivi, suju upunguza. Nani kakuambia that I want kupungua kwanza? Maybe this is what I like to look like. And yani, there's so many like, you know, social barriers that we cross that are... Afu kuna, yani kuna vitu vingi, you don't know what people are going through. Why and who are you to tell someone this? Hasa hasa ukiwa bosi. Tunasahau kwamba at one point in time, maybe you were in a certain role. This is a human being. They are not a re, just a resource. Ndiyo human resources, a human is a resource. But they are not just that. After work, they are also human. Wana familia, wana matatizo. Mtu labda siju, hatu wazita kutoa constructive criticism vizuri. Munaezo kamfokea mtu mbeleza watu. It's counterproductive to you as well because kama yuna lead department, kazi ya yule mtu feeds into you uh, looking good as well, you reaching your goals. Sasa ukisha mfunja, umefanya nini? So kuna vitu vingi, I can say, within emotional intelligence and HR go hand in hand. And kitu muhimu zaidi when it comes to social awareness and dealing with people is empathy. And what is empathy? Sio tu kumangalia mtu na kusema, oh mtu anaumia. That is sympathy. Empathy is thinking as if you were them. Kuna watu wanaisi wako empathetic, manake maskini yule. No, kwani wewe ungekua yule. With her story or his story, with his background. Kuna mtu amesuwa na babake, analia njio, sawa. Lakini, your relationship with your father is very different from that person's relationship with their father. So, ujua analia nini? Pingena analia kuna madeni, amba anayajua. No, it's true. Wezi kujua, sasa wewe unaenda tu, yani, kichotaki kiku... As if you are them. Pingine, you, babake, yani, they did not even have a relationship. But, uh, yani, unajua, lakini saibi mamake kuna kitu kicham. There's very many things to nakuwa, since we think in our perspective, as me. Okay, bossy, you are thinking from your perspective, as you. But when you put yourself in someone else's shoes, as them, kwanza, unaweza kuongea nae in a way that they understand you. So, kila atano, nchitaka kumfundisha mtu, anakuelewa kwa undani zaidi, alafu anaweza kubadilika mwenyewe from their perspective. And both of you meet your goals. Mi nama kwanza ni achi hapo, ili mwendele. Yes, na swali. My question is, I'm not very good on the new concept of empathy to me. Lakini, kama ni mekuelewa, you say that we should think the way they think. Yeah. Okay. How will I know if this person has got one, two, three? Mimi nikitaka kuthink like, ye, yule mtu anavyo think, I must have a prior understanding and knowledge of what this person has in mind. That's number one. Number two, the literal meaning of consolation is to give, is to comfort a person. Consolation. So our society is so much uh, are customized to the concept of consoling mm -hmm. a person pale anapopata matatizo mm -hmm. ndio zile tunasema pole usijali mungu atasaidia jipe mm -hmm. moyo jikaze usilie mm -hmm. this is how the tradition the society our society normally revolves around sasa kwa mungu wa maelezo yako it is like it is like it's something different kidogo mm -hmm. as per you know sasa kidogo kama unaweza ukatusaidia okay. because um, i think i have a dispute mm -hmm. inside okay yes okay <laughs> so let's start with the consolation and then go later to how how you can know what someone is thinking for instance it's not magic with console consoling like you said is exactly what it is and that's actually within an encompassing empathy 
the problem is when you don't put yourself in someone else's shoes, it's how you console them that is wrong. Kwa vile haujamwelewa yeye yuko wapi na umeenda into that perspective from your thinking. Unaweza ukasema even the wrong things in that situation that that person doesn't need to hear. So consoling essentially what you're doing to make someone feel comfortable ni unamvalidate. That is essentially what you're doing. Kwamba naelewa that you are suffering. No matter what it is that you are saying, essentially that is what you are doing. Unamwambia tu mtu kwamba naelewa you are suffering. Now Paka hapo, if that is what your consolation is, you have done a great job, end of story. But now when you're adding advice, that's what I'm talking about. When you're adding advice, that's the problem. Because you cannot fully advise someone who is walking different path in life from you without them actually welcoming you into that frame of thought, for instance. So mara nyingi, a lot of advice is coming from a selfish point of view, a selfish place of I, this is what I've seen. I know more than you or I have been through this so I know what you should do. From my experience this is what has happened. A lot of times that's where advice come, comes from. And the art of advice in itself, as a psychologist I work a lot with people one-on-one -on -one, counseling them, giving them therapy. I never give advice. Ever. There has, it, I can lose my license for giving advice. We, that's the first thing you learn. Do not give advice. Because people are already capable of solving their problems. They know exactly what they need to do. What you can be is a mirror for how they solve that problem. And that's where empathy comes in. Em empathy, essentially, is what makes us social. Otherwise, tungekua kama sijui. Yani tungekua nyama. Tungekua very individual. It's in your brain. Kwamba mtu unajua haki, ipiga miao hivi, na wesu unafanya hivi hivi. That's due to a part of your brain called mirror neurons. They mirror exactly what it is that another person is doing. So there's a lot of times with empathy, you can have the emotion of the other person. But when you go beyond that to now apply yourself and your life, mm. you've gone astray. Because a lot of times, stories that has match exactly. And there's many times that you can miss i hope pack up or maybe i've answered something <laughs> i don't know no, maybe 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 i should i don't know. ask you or say something mm. i'm trying to struggle for the sake of this context mm. to understand the difference between empathy and sympathy mm. okay uh if i get you right from what you've said you mean that empathy is when um, you can you can see and feel what somebody is going through mm. and draw your line like this is my end mm. this is where i can end you don't have to draw a line. You don't actually see. That's where you don't have to draw a line. You can keep consoling someone for hours, you know, without giving them advice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes, so the, exactly. It's just not applying yourself is, is what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Then, then sympathy could be like going a little bit beyond the line and become that person and you wish to be like him mm -mm. or, or what? No. Sympathy mm. is... I've seen a child fall there, mm. okay, and their mother is running to them and I say, Oh, poor child is hurt. <laughs> that is sympathy. Oh, I see on TV, Maziko, what what I Yeah, mani maskini wale o mefiwa. That's it, actually. Sympathy is just feeling sorry for someone. Just feeling End sorry of story. Sorry. Empathy is what goes further, where you feel sorry for someone, but then you remove yourself from your perspective. That's what I was looking for. Uh -huh. And you enter the perspective of the other person. So what I'm saying is a lot of people get empathy wrong in the sense kwamba, Everybody just says, walk in someone else's shoes. But you can easily walk in someone else's shoes as you. Yeah. So what empathy is, is you walk in someone else's shoes as them. Mm -hmm. You will find out a whole different world than what you thought what their world was. Sasa mimi naongelea kama mabosi, gazini, mara nyingi. Wewe umesha jisahau tena. Kule, anapotoka yule, wewe tena miaka ishirini lopita. Usha elewa, haukumbuki tena. So by practicing empathy, you are able now, even though that's not your life anymore yeah. and you don't even want it to be your life mm. sour, but by practicing empathy, you are able to meet that person where mm. they are so that even in your communication, even in your training, kuna training nyingi naona sana. Yani, una train watu, au mata ma professor, anamfundisha mwanafunzi as if ni yeye, anaelewa ito kitu, anachuki ongelea. Alafu, aki uliza sali unakasiriku. Sasa, why, what do you expect, how do you expect them to understand from mm. where they're coming from? How do you expect them to actually deliver you being you yeah. mm. and them being them? 
And I see Navohisi, and I think it's a problem that was raised before, mm. there's a big disconnect and I, the, the missing piece is that empathy that people don't practice. Ujitoe wewe kwenye kichwa chako, uingie kwenye kichwa cha yule mwingine unaitaka kukomunikate nae, unaitaka kumtrain, unaitaka adeliver to you. And that is part of leadership. Yes, Essentially, yes. that is a very big part of leadership. Mm. Your leadership is not just um, and leading you, mm. but also where is this person trying to go mm. and what is the best way for he, this person to deliver so mm. that we can get there. Mm, a big part of that is empathy, is removing yourself from mm. your perspective. How can you lead people you don't understand? Mm. And if you look in the world, there's a very big disconnect in all leaders. So too, a small uh, environment where it's just a boss in their department. In the whole world, we have a lot of leaders who don't understand people mm. that they're leading. Mm. And then it's like, Matizo. You understand? Yeah. Laba is to me is terms like psychology. Sana, so I don't know what I'm doing. Laba is to me is terms like psychology. Laba is to me is terms like psychology. Laba is to me is terms like psychology. Kuelewa, yani wanajifanya, wanajifanya kutokutaka kuelewa mm. watu wengine. Mimi nafikiri sababu moja hapo ni kwamba wanadamu wengi huwa tunatambia ama trend ya kufanya prejudgment. Mm. Amechelewa mm. ni mzembe. Mm. Done. Lakini siku hiyo mguu amenyesha kwake ni bondeni mm-hmm. probably nyumba ilikuwa na zama mm. so she or he had to work so much hard to make sure kwamba ana safeguard familia yake mm. waje kazini kwako. Lakini kachelewa huyu ni mzembe. I, apart from prejudging, we are, we, are, we are too quick in concluding. Yani, we see a situation, we assume the conclusion. Mm. Like, we are going to be able to do it. What do you want to do? Amos. You get the point? Mm. Kwayo, kwa hiyo, when I feel sengine, sengine, kama alifo sema, mtaala mbale, mm. ni hile tabia ya sisi kutokutaka kuwa na realistic approach into mm. life, na kutaka na kutokuwa wawazi exactly. katika hali tunayofahamu sangine huwa mm. tunafunga macho makusudi mm. na tunafunga masikio makusudi ili kuonekana sasa we have positioned ourselves mm. kama mabosi mm. na tunachokifanya ndio ubosi mm. yani yeah. unasahau kwamba ubosi bora ni ule ubosi unaoangalia ubinadamu mm. ni Sijui kama it will be the best example lakini mimi kila ngisoma na kufuatilia story la Richard Branson mm. I learned a lot from that guy mm. the way he approaches is talent na namna na manage watu mm. utakuta kuna humanistic approach mm. kwenye hizo theories zake na zifanye exactly. and that example you told is exactly what empathy is yes. um, kwa, it's exactly that from, from what uh, my colleague has said mm. actually um zungumzia okay let's say um na Moses anachogusia mm. from naona kama in vertical point of view kwamba inatoka kwenye leadership inakuja chini mm. Like in, is it not an obligation for this person as well mm-hmm. to understand the other? Oh, 100%. Okay, nacho kisema ni kwamba leo let's say um it is me who is a leader. Mm. I'm supposed now to dwell in and understand the group of my people. Mm-hmm. But of course we have a vision kama kama organization as an organization. We have a vision. We have objectives mm-hmm. is communicated. These people are not fitting into that. Mm-hmm. Are they it is, is is it not into their responsibility as well to to come into terms let's meet halfway mm-hmm. yeah, for them also to understand like in pia 20 years ago i was not arrogant i was mm-hmm. not um uh, okay to me to no arrogant mm-hmm. leo me, me as a leader i have to understand this person who is an arrogant mm-hmm. what is the role nafikiri my question uh, relies mostly what is the distribution of roles mm-hmm. in understanding each other for those people to us and for us to those people which is that I understand but mm. for those people mm-hmm. us okay, okay if, if I, I can, can put, put, put it simply, simply emotional, emotional intelligence, intelligence example, example to know to me you are right is vertical and, and even going further even just horizontally between, between colleagues teams in general Everyone should be emotionally intelligent. Let's put it that way. It's not a skill that just leaders should have. It's just in what in whatever position you're at, it's a skill that presents itself for the needs that you must uh, fulfill, right? So, at within your colleagues, you have the duty. For instance, leadership is not just a title. See you. So, you have the duty within each other to influence each other. That's what leadership is. And part of emotional intelligence with the social awareness and social relationship management is simply influence, right? So, of course, from the from the position of employees going or 
team members towards team leader it's that if they are applying emotional intelligence if they are trained to apply unfortunately like i said a lot of us are not if they are trained to apply emotional intelligence there are many things that your leader doesn't have to say in order for you to understand what your role is and what you need to deliver at what time and why. Yeah. But then going back exactly to even what I said, Kwamba, a lot of people don't even understand why their jobs even contribute to anything. Yana, you are kuna could deliver this time, this particular document. That is the end of my contribution. How it applies, who it affects, why I'm doing it. There's a lot of people who don't know that. And you are ito kazjake, yeye, pekeake. How it even affects your employee next to you, maybe there's a second step. And I do have to come and pick this person in production. Go and pick that person in production. But highly that this whole thing is to do with a big marketing pro uh, campaign that must end on this date because this new product is being released to affect these millions of people. That is not a thing that a lot of people uh, attribute to their work. But if they were to attribute to their work, if they were emotionally intelligent, th those are the, the types of networks that come naturally. Mm. Because we socially interact all the time. If you are all talking, there are people who speak louder, first of all. There are people who you never hear their voice during work hours. Then after work hours, they are the loudest person there, you know? feel free. So, because this is a social gathering, so we are having fun. But Kule Officini, what their output is? What their relation is in that team? What is their contribution? You expect someone with a mindset I actually believe Kwamba anafanya kitchamana. You know what I mean? And in the end, you know what I'm about to say, ma? Una fokio ambeleza watu. Yani, we must be aware of what is it that we are producing, especially when we're leading. And that leadership could be mimi na wewe, it could be mimi na bossi, it could be mimi nyumbani. But what is the consequence of what we put out there? We must be aware of that. And I think as HR managers, that's something you can... Tap into. Tap into yeah. for, so for the risk. Me now, man, I'm a little perspective, kidogo, okay. because we only have like uh, four minutes kumaliza here mm. before we move forward mm. to another mm. topic. For the sake of time, naona uh, sasa hivi kwamba most employees are struggling, uh, be it leaders, any, any person, and I must change my phrasing, most people are struggling with mental health. Mm. People are struggling to express how they feel, of course, because most of us are not empathetic, mm. so Anadiuata, if I express myself, you will not meet me where mm. I am. Yeah. You will impose your situation on me. Mm. So how do we, as HR people, help people with mental health? Because there's a lot going on. There, there are leaders who don't understand. There's a lot of tasks. There's a lot of information, relationships, everything that is going on in this person's life. How do we help? our employees, how do we help the people everywhere have uh, understanding on mental health? I'll, I'll put it in a very summary way. Mm. Let's help human beings become human beings. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, what do I mean by that? Uh, the approach has been like, a lot is happening that mm. is taking the humanity away. Mm -hmm. Wewe kama HR, hmm. tuzungulia role HR. Ukiwa ndi mtu ambaye unasawabisha kutokuwa na utu eneo la kazi, hmm. tayari, tayari una, una increases on mental problems na zisema. Hmm. Lakini tuna, tuna, tunarudisha je utu kwa watu. How, to, how do we make human beings become more human beings? Hmm. Cha kwanza kabisa tuwasaidia watu to improve mausiano. Hmm. Mausiano na nani? Mausiano ya kwanza tokiwa tuwasaidia mtu to improve, ni mahusiano wake yeye na yeye binafsi. Mm. Mm. Yani yeah, watu personal. wengi watu wengi wana matatizo na wao binafsi. Yani somebody has a conflict with himself. Mm. Mtu mtu unakuta na matatizo na yeye binafsi. Mm. Cha kwanza tuwasaidie watu kuwa na mahusiano bora kati yake yeye na yeye binafsi. Mm. Then cha pili sasa tumtoe pale tumsaidie kuwa na mahusiano bora yeye na watu wanaomzunguka mm. kianzia cha kwanza kabisa from family level 
then sasa tuje katika work mm. then tukimaliza hapo tuwasaidie wanao mzunguka huyu mtu mm. wawe na mahusiano bora na huyu mm. mm. na njia moja kubwa utakayoangalia hapo ni, ni through soft skills mm. nyingi tu ambazo tunaanzia labda kwenye team building communication mm. a lot of mm. a lot of issues zinakuja hapo mm. lakini zote hizo zinalenga katika kuimprove mahusiano mm-hmm. it is believed ama it is seen kwamba watu technical people are competent mm. lakini when it comes to soft skills yeah people are mm-hmm. not competent mm-hmm. na as a result kila siku kuna kuumana katika maeneo ya kazi mm-hmm. na ule utu na potea mm-hmm. lakini kuna kitu kingine ambacho kinateka wewe utu wetu ambao unabidi tukupomba nacho ni interface ya technology mm-hmm. technology inafanya watu people are so much drawn into issues za technology mm-hmm. yes kwamba wanasahau utu kwamba imefikia mahali mtu anakaa na mtu hapo anatumia whatsapp oh yeye nimekutumia email <laughs> yuko hapo oh, unabidi anajibu naye and that is just sitting kwa kufikia mahali yes to respect technology mm-hmm. lakini pale ambapo tunaweza ku interface na ku interact na mm-hmm. mzako mm-hmm. we do it Yeah. Tumefikia mahali ambapo siku hizi tunasema kwamba tunatoka jioni for gatherings. Tunafika mm. kule everybody is chatting. Yeah. Yeah. Kwe, kwa hiyo mahusiano yamekufa. Mm. Kwa ili kuya, lazima tuyatengeneze. Tufike mahali ambapo tunaweza kusema leo leo labda every Friday tutakuwa na phone away get away get mm. away. Kama tunafika everybody has to drop their phones somewhere. So, yeah. Let's go and talk. Kuna mahali mimi niwe kufanya project moja nikagundua kwamba katika ile kazi ndio kufanya bali kwa anafanya team 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 building. Lakini mimi nikamwambia let's do team strengthening. Mm. Watu walikuwa wasalimiani asubuhi. Kabisa na it was not a problem. Yaani somebody walks in na ongea na mtu anachukua kombe cha kahawa na kawa dawati lake, mm. anaacha computer. How do you how do you expect katika mazingira hayo kwanza yeah. kabisa kuwa na organization culture inaofaa mm. lakini mwisho wa siku kuwa na watu ambao ni balanced mm. na mwisho wa siku output gani tunaenda kupata. Kwa hiyo watu wakafika mahali tension ikawa ina rise taratibu nobody yeah. greets each other mm. lakini pia tabia ya kufokeana kwenye pool they are the pool office mm. mtu anakuja kwenye pool anamshautia mtu at the other end mm. ustaarabu yeah. umepotea yeah. kwa less help human beings yes. to become yes. human beings mm. kwa ku improve ustaarabu maeneo ya kazi mm. ma- um, communications uh, team building mm. so let's, let's put people into interpersonal relationships ziwepo kujengane mm. tuwe mm. watu mahusiano yao improve na hapo ndipo tutaweza lakini njia moja hapo kubwa kama HR tuwe na sikio na HR wengi masikio yao yanapamba na wao wanafikiri wao wanafikiri kwamba kwa sababu ni HR they have an upper end in everything which is not true as an HR yuko huko pale ku facilitate utu uwepo ili watu waweze ku produce asante Elita you wanted Elita you wanted to say something <laughs> no 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 not give me potato lakini naona Moses ameongea zaidi oh. and uh, sihitaji kuidilute. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I think to add more more yani perfectly and to add more to that I can say any as an advice to HR because this is the job that I guess psychologists do but in a way you, you are counselors mm. and unajua at least kwenye culture yetu kitanzania I don't think tayari unajua mental health is such a taboo it's a stereotype and it's considered a weakness now yeah. imagine that yani mtu mwanaume anajiona yani mimi baba familia kabisa tinaenda kusema yani kule kwamba mimi nina matatizo yani kwanza kwanza even to process that paka afike mlangoni kwako to come and tell you that it must be a safe place kabisa right it must be a place ambayo they feel ultimately they can actually get help exactly. and even if they cannot get help it is safe what yeah. they said mm. sasa kwa sasa ni tabia gossip sun mm. in the office you know and now a child probably not a lot mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. employees if employees don't feel safe already in society when it comes to mental health mm. in the office to answer the question that you have you should have at least kwenye mashule sana na universities mm. wanajitahidi sana save to have um, flyers everywhere specifically in the bathroom mm because that is the mm. the most vulnerable place someone is mm. during the workplace yeah. where they can read a flyer without someone seeing eh mbona ulikuwa unasoma ile nani flyer about mental health you know what i mean mm. that has all the resources of at this time to this time mm. are hours that you can come to nani to the office mm. to talk about blah 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 tutakuwa tuna resource ya aina flani mm. tukusaidie hiki hivi hivi because you must understand kwamba lazima you break through the barrier of the heavy heavy african stereotype mm-hmm. iliopo when it comes to mental health mm-hmm. what to i have people who come to my office at night because they don't want to run into anyone the building has so many other offices you could have mm-hmm. gone to any other mm-hmm. office but because you don't want to run into anyone you must come at night which is also a safety issue for me mm-hmm. lakini sometimes it depends on who it is i must 
comply yeah. and put some measures in place. So, lazima tuelewe kwanza with mental health we have a very long way to go. Watu wanaamini uchawi, watu wanaamini mambo mengi sana. Watu hata waelewi what mental health is and even if they have a mental health problem. Yeah. And it could be small things that lead to big things. It could be daily stress, how wongelei that just leads to full on depression or a psychotic attack. Lakini mtu hajaelewi kama they supposed to talk about it. So I think maybe kuanza as HR to just have like a direction towards resources and assuring them that there is a very like there's a huge confidentiality that will be in place for them to open up interesting guys we are ending on that note and we've spoken about emotional intelligence uh being aware uh what is going on and um uh, um, 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 a lot has been said by uh, Araika. I will not uh, repeat what she has said. Mm -hmm. We've learned a lot, by the way. And I also am very interested, and I'll quote what Moses has said, let us help human beings become human beings. And we can do this by really uh, improve on relationships from self-personal relationships to everyone in all these skills. And by uh, 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 HR people should create sp safe space for people to be free, free. For, and allow people to look at vulnerability as power, not in, uh, weakness or any other thing. So guys, thank you so much, Araika. This is very interesting. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Thank you, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, just as we conclude, now we've spoken so much about HR, Moses and Amos. What do you think is the future of HR? All right. Um, speaking of the future of HR, mm -hmm. in relation to labor laws mm -hmm. and other spheres, mm -hmm. I see this normally in three angles. Mm -hmm. uh, number one is um, compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, I can talk of multiple skills, which mm -hmm. I've already narrated earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, number three, uh, we, can conclude, we can conclude mainly on... The, um, individual efforts mm -hmm. of the person as we have seen the wind of um, business how it is mm -hmm. uh, now we the emphasis is much more on compliance mm -hmm. in a lot of areas tax uh, being taxed being other things so labor laws as it is itself mm -hmm. they do establish uh, we call substantive and procedural when i say sub substantive i mean those rights mm -hmm. and procedure are those narrative which an organization needs to follow mm -hmm. in implementing certain decisions, uh, be it termination of, of, of the employment contract uh, or other things. Mm -hmm. um, mostly, let's say, on the issues of um, uh, in compliance, on the issues of uh, engaging foreign employees, mm -hmm. which is, I can mostly talk of permits. Mm -hmm. You see, of course, we have a set of narratives which require an expatriate to come, mm. work in, who, who comes to work in Tanzania, mm. in a long, uh, in a long duration of more than 90 days mm. to hold a work permit, to hold a residence permit. As an HR, you need to be very keen, make sure that you totally comply because non-compliance normally has the consequences, mm -hmm. and the consequences, most of them, let's say in the Immigration Act, mm. most of them are the offences which they can even lead you to be jailed, yeah. mm. uh, leave alone penalties. Mm. Nowadays, of course, currently we have a new regulation which is normally soon to be gazetted, mm. which will uh, introduce compounding offences, mm. compounding offences on the aspect of uh, non-labor compliance. Mm. So if uh, a labor officer acting under the directives of the labor commissioner mm -hmm. visits your workplace and found that you have not complied, you can be penalized on spot mm -hmm. and the penalty can be as huge as 50 million. Mm -hmm. Um, <coughs> these aspects of uh, compliance, they can be a matter of life and death in terms of the so, uh, uh, a difference between life and death in terms of an organization. Mm -hmm. Because uh, let's say for an organization which does not hold that much, a penalty of 50 million sometimes, a person can close their business. Mm -hmm. That's one. But two, being a compliant, it also goes hand in hand to distinguish what person or what kind of an organization or organization it is. Mm -hmm. This is uh, mostly on the organizational behavior, culture, mm -hmm. which um, uh, my colleague said earlier. So 
I think there is a lot need to be done in terms of compliance. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, we have a very critical issue nowadays in relation to dispute settlements. Mm -hmm. um, be it termination of employment contracts, be it handling of the grievances itself, mm -hmm. strikes and lockouts, all these are, are issues which HRs need to keep ad updating themselves to understand in detail because they can lead to huge consequences to, organ to an organization. Mm. As I'm talking uh, right now, there is a, uh, a CMA decision, a mm. Commission for Mediation Arbitration mm. decision, mm. which has penalized a certain bank which recently did retrenchment mm. on employees to pay 1.4 billion wow. for just only skipping on the procedures for mm. retrenchment. Of course, the procedures are there, but how you make yourself acquainted to understand the procedures, this is now the, the personal uh, 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 issue of each individual. Mm. Um, we have a lot of trainings, uh, our organization can send people to understand. Mm. We have a lot of uh, manuals and books which have been uh, prepared for mm. our people to understand. Mm. So it's upon the individuals themselves now to move forward and understand mm. clearly what is supposed to be done on those, in those areas of dimension. Mm. We do prepare payrolls as HRs. HRs are business partners. And business partner is a person who supports other uh, uh, um, uh, departments in reaching the organizational objectives. Now, as a HR, you prepare a payroll. Of course, there are a lot of compliance issues you need to understand, mm -hmm. especially on tax, what need to be remitted. Now we have a set of new principles and regulations which have been introduced in relation to the social security um, uh, issues. Mm -hmm. You need yourself as a HR at your personal individual level to understand what is the requirement of the law now in terms of the regulations on social security. Mm. What do I need to do when I, I recruit an expatriate to do a short term assignment? Mm. The tax which I'm supposed to, 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 to deduct and remit. Mm. Eh? All these are issues which expose you to another area now. Mm. Tax now is, 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 a, is an income tax act. Mm. When you talk of expatriates, uh, uh, um, Relations, but other things, these are immigration. Mm. When you talk of health and safety of the individuals, you have to rely yourself to the Occupational Health Safety Act. Mm. So you, you can find yourself that as an HR, you, you just like as, as, as good as an accountant yeah. who inter in, inter interact, intersect into different departments to understand that business, how it goes. Mm -hmm. So you need to accommodate yourself as a HR. You don't, not, you don't just need to be a personnel, mm -hmm. high and far, things like that, mm -hmm. but you need to accommodate yourself to other spheres of the business, mm -hmm. to understand perspective of the business in general, in terms of compliance, as I've said, but personal efforts as at individual levels mm -hmm. to understand a lot of things. Yeah, that's, that's in short, wow. I can say. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Thank you. So we've spoken about uh, compliance, multiple skills, individual efforts, and thank you so much. Thank you. What do you think is the future of HR? The future of HR. I think it's the future of HR, um, future of HR in Tanzania. I think it's the future of the history of HR. We've been here to see where we are and where we are. We've been talking about it. In a brief history, Nkwamba, as a profession, is a growing profession. Mm -hmm. HR ni inakuwa, uwezi kuinganisha na, na, na profession kama lawyers. Lawyers mm -hmm. wamekuwa wame katika historia ya pre-independence and after independence kwa muda mrefu. Kwa hiyo kama HR, tunakuwa. Tulianzia kwenye personal management, tumi walk through leo, tukone, tunangalia HRM, na maybe strategic human resource management. Mm -hmm. Lakini pia, aina ya workforce tulikuwa nae wakati, wakati wa immediately after independence, mm -hmm has kept on changing to where we are at the moment. Mm. So even the trend and the behavior of the personnel department by then mm. is different from what is currently happening now and mm. is going to change with what is going to happen in the future. Exactly. Kwa zamani ilikuwa ni mtu yote alikuwa anaweza tu kuwa a personnel administrator ama personnel manager kwa sababu the level tulikuwa inahitaji by then immediately after independence to early 80s to 90s ni clerical jobs watu kwa nafanya. Very clerical jobs kusokweza magatasi, kuandikia watu likizo, kwa wapa watu nini. Vitu vya kawaida. Clerical, tukua nafanya zoi kazi. Na tulikuwa tuna fit. Kwa sababu mtu yote alikuwa aneza kawa accountant, ya natupio kwenye HR department, ya nakuwa personnel officer. Anybody could become a personnel officer. Then, tukafika mahali ambapo, tukaitaji watu ambao ni specialist wa kumeni challenge. Then, tukaanza kuchukua watu ambao wamesoma zile principles of how to manage human resources as, 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 as a resource important for the company. Hapa tukapata watu wengi walitoka viona wamesoma vitu tukawaajiri. Tuliko sasa hivi ni kwamba tuna watu wale wa zamani ambao they were not professionally trained 
Tuna watu ambao they are professional trained ambao wako tayari kwenye game na kuna watu ambao ni mamluki. Yaani mtu amesoma kichochote alafu anakuja kuingia <laughs> sababu is the only job aliyopata. Kwa hiyo tuna tuna hiyo mix hii kwa hapo. Tunakoelekea. Tunakoelekea tunahitaji tuwe na well refined specialist. Tufike mahasa tuchuje tupaki na wale ambao wanaweza ku practice HR. Mm-hmm. Na unachuja vipi? Unachuja kwa ku, kwa ku lift up levels of professionalism mm-hmm. kukuwa na regulated board. Yes. It's on the process. Huh? Thanks to HRSTA wanafanya hiyo kazi sasa hivi wanajaribu ku ku, ku ku work with the government kupata board. Kwa hiyo kama 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 future ni nini then future is 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 promising. Mm-hmm. And people have worked so much hard from the past to the present na tunakuelekea ni kuzuri. Kwa hiyo it, we need a regulated kind of a board ambayo itachuja professionals ili tuweze kuwa na high professionalism. Mm-hmm. Lakini pia trend ya dunia ama trend ya technology na tulazimisha tupate very qualified professionals. Mm-hmm. Kwa nini nasema hivyo? Utagundua leo hii kwenye kuweza ku survive katika soko you need brains. Yes. Leo watu wanalala wanamka na app kichwani mm. anaiweka sokoni it changes everything mm-hmm. a good example is what mpesa did to vodacom mm. lakini ile ni talent kwa hiyo sasa kama tunataka talent kwa nazo tunahitaji watu bora mm. wa kuweza kutafuta talent na wa kuweza kuzimaintain talent mm. kwa hiyo tunakoelekea ni kwamba we need professionals wa kuweza ku maintain kuzitafuta ku maintain hizo talent kwenye organization mm. na ili tuweze ku survive we need people who are focused who are professionals who are regulated mm. For the future is bright if what you all we keep on working toward refinement. Tunaelekea kwenye future ambayo inahitaji professionalism to the peak. Yes. So there is where we are heading na tutafika and uh, I, 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 I I'm glad kwamba generation hii tuko kwenye key transition na tunaelekea mahali pazuri. So the future is promising we need na, kena, na mtu yote ambaye kwenye game la HR lazima ajue hili. Tunakoelekea tunahitaji watu ambao they are very good and very professional ambao wanajua nini maana ya talent management kwa sababu tunakoelekea the war is about talent mm. if you cannot fight for talent you are no longer fitting to become part of the HR. thank you wow thank you so much guys this is good i have questions i'm sorry i have to use my phone uh, hilda from tanga has a question anyone can pick it and hilda is here and she says Sheria ya nchi ya Tanzania inasema ni huru na ruhusa mtu kuisha mahali popote Tanzania pasipo kuvunja sheria au ana haki ya kuishi popote pasipo kuvunja sheria. Lakini kwenye utumishi wa umma kama ulisome, ulisomeka mwanzo au wakati unaajiriwa ulitoka da lakini kwa sasa unataka kwenda Bukoba kama nauli ya Bukoba ni kubwa kuliko kwenda da unalip, unalipo ya da. Wakati ulihama da ukahamia Bukoba au wazazi walihama da wakahamia Bukoba. Je, hii ni haki kwa HR kufanya hivyo miongozo inayomkataza HR asilipe na uli ya makazi mapya ni nafikira naongelea ile place of premises wakati unaajiriwa mm. kwa hiyo sasa je kama ulikuwa da umeolewa Bukoba ina maana umehama sasa ukitaka kulipwa pesa ya kurudi kule wanakupa ya, ya kurudi Bukoba sasa wakiona ya Bukoba ni mbali wanakupa ya da na fikiri hicho anachokiongelea mm. sio tu kwamba ni pesa ya kurudi au nini. Mm. Kwenye utumishi wa umma kuna vitu tunavyoita uh, sema ile live allowance. Mm. Kwa hiyo mfano unavyoenda likizo mm. kuna amount ambayo unapaswa kulipa mm-hmm. ambayo inatakiwa ulipwe sehemu ile uliosema wewe umetokea. Mm. Kwa hiyo nachofikiri hicho ndo anamaanisha mm. au else labda kukiwa kunatokea shida nyingine kwamba wewe uliandikisha huko sehemu fulani na sasa hivi umeolewa mm. kwa hiyo unatakiwa upelekwe sehemu nyingine mm. kwa maana ume nani sasa miongozo inasemaje mm. na fikiri hizo zitakuwa na hitaji miongozo inasemaje labda kabla ya na miongozo sasa ndio mzoe miongozo kule naye hapo unajua kuna kuna vitu vya kawaida kabisa maeneo ya kazi ambavyo sometimes tuna communicate wengine and uh, ntanzi alikosema elita Leo nimekuajiri mimi na shirika la Balauma ambalo lina branches all over Tanzania. Mm-hmm. Then nimekuajiri kwenu ni Morogoro. Mm-hmm. Wewe ni mtoto wa kike. Tumzungumzie mtoto wa kike maana yake ndio rais kwa flip up ma, maeneo ya nasema nyumbani. Mm-hmm. Then umeolewa mm-hmm. na mtu kwa ni Kigoma. Mm-hmm. Si ndio maana yake? Mm-hmm. Imefika likizo mwezi wa 12 unanijia ichiara unaniambia mimi kwamba mimi nilipo hela yangu ya kwenda likizo as per requirements za kwenda Kigoma. Mm-hmm. Then mimi HR ninakataa. 
si ndio mm. kwamba no mimi nimekuajiri wewe ni wa Morogoro mm. mimi nafikiri issue wa yanzi pale tunakuja kudebate wewe ni wa Morogoro wa Malala mm. issue ina, inarudi nyuma sana kwamba mimi HR nimeset system gani ya ku accommodate changes of personal particulars information at every time that is needed mm. kwa hiyo professionalism ile inazungumzia pale mwanzoni a good HR will always have a system ambayo every time and every moment the person changes any particular information about himself lazima mm-hmm. accommodate mfano si umeelewa mm. you should have brought chat cha ku cha ndoa mm. chat cha ndoa kitatuambia mimi Suleiman na hapo wakati tunatuona tunaambia kabisa tunaambia sasa hivi sasa na mimi likizo ni kwangu sasa itakuwa mm-hmm. naenda unyamwezini mm. kwa hiyo mimi kama HR logically speaking mm. itakuwa mzembe kukuambia na kulipa likizo ya kwenda morogoro mm. kwa sababu nyumbani kwako sasa hivi ni wapi tabora lakini pia upande mwingine makampuni mengi ya baada ya kupita hiyo problems kuwa ni kubwa mm. system inayotumika siku hizi watu wanalipa flat rate wameamua kwamba ni one month salary kwa mtu yeyote huo yeah. unakaa mm. manzese kwa sababu ni karibu na Dar es Salaam ambapo ni head office ama unakaa Kigoma mm. kila mtu atapata mshahara wa kumi na tatu hii imeenda hapo lot of issues kwa sababu mm. kuna watu wengine walikuwa wanakaa sehemu ambazo wanakuambia hakuna magari yanaoenda mm. kwaona mlipa yeye ndege na watoto wake na kila kitu na kila kitu alafu na mwingine kwao ni manzese wanamlipa hela daladala kutoka posta kwenda manzese mm. so hizi inequalities zimefikia mahali mashirika mengi yameadapt procedures za kuwa sasa tunalipana mshahara wa 13 mm. whether unaenda nao popote au nao popote mm. mm. sije kwa hiyo kumjibu huyo kwamba whether ichara is right or wrong mm. inahitaji to study your situation yake lakini kwa hiyo tuliyosema labda anaweza kapata mauli sana. Tuliongea habari ya kwamba let's help human to be human. Yes. Sasa wewe unakuwaje HR then you don't help your human to be human as a resource. Mm. Even ni vitu ambavyo tunatakiwa tuviangalie. It's like kama mtu ameamua kubadilisha hata information nyingine. Mm. Watu unakuta mtu akiajiriwa anasema next of kin my husband. Mm. Imetokea mme separate au amefariki. Yaani au ameolewa sasa imeshatoka hiki imeenda kingine ameleta information plan ofisini lakini mm. you as HR mm. kwa sababu tu ya nature yako ya kazi ambayo umezoea kuifanya mm. ujabadilisha zile information then at the end of the day nakuja kute kunani kuumiza watu wengine mm. is kwamba tukubali tufanye kazi ambazo tunahitaji kuzifanya mm. that's all Amos na shari kutoka kwa Veronica wa Iringa anauliza anaomba kujua information kuhusu maternity leave Okay. Briefly too. Maternity leave as 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 it is kwanza it is mostly concerning with employee ambaye ni female mm. na maternity leave inatolewa leave cycle yako cycle yake ni 36 months mm. kwa sababu ukitaka ku understand leave you must understand the cycle of each leave so every leave has got a cycle annual is 12 months mm. maternity is uh, 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 36 months maybe Moses anaweza ka adapt more mm. what the cycle mean mm. maana yake nikisema cycle kwa mtu ambaye haielewi cycle anaweza mm. akapata shida mm. lakini maternity, maternity inatolewa ni <coughs> ni siku tisini pale ambapo ni siku 84 pale ambapo mama atajifungua mtoto mmoja lakini ni siku moja pale mama atakapojifungua more, uh, eh, more than one kid sasa confusion inakujaga unakuta mama nimejifungua amejifungua mtoto amefariki. Mm. The question asks uh, for, to be put forward ni kwamba yule mama ataendelea na maternity? Alishaomba mm. na alishapata. Mm. Na mtoto meanwhile mtoto amefariki in the cause. Mm. Ataendelea na maternity au itakuwaje? Kwani what is the role? Sasa kawaida maternity maana maternity kwanza ni kumpa mama nafasi ya kumlea mtoto. So it's more of what Moses said, let's make human human beings more human beings, more human beings. <laughs> kwa maana kwamba tunawapa nafasi viumbe wanaokuja wapate ile haki yao ya kukana na wazazi na maternity leave um, inapo, inapotokea situation mama amefariki mtoto amefariki automatically inakoma ile auto, ma, maternity leave inakoma kwa sababu there is no point ya mama kuendelea kumlelea mtu ambaye hayupo si ndio so mama huyu anaweza akapata um, anaweza akapata si kama ana complications anaweza akapata sick leave ya muda akapewa nafasi aka refresh mm. akapata na full then baada hapo atarejea kazini upon recommendation by a prescribed by medical doctor mm. lakini in, 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 in reality wengine wao wana confuse kwamba sasa kwa sababu alishapata maternity kwa atamalizia mm. concept ya kumalizia haipo kwa sababu kile kiumbe hakipo tena mm. that's a nutshell about maternity leave oh, yeah 
uh, uh, nilipata swali moja kwa ajili yako lakini niliombwa uh, nisishe jina uh, na hili ni kwamba what if nimepata breakdown ofisini ni, nifanye nini yani emotional breakdown ofisini nifanye nini okay yani mbele za watu eh hey, yani ni huko sasa tuseme uh, ni, ni, ni ofisi ambayo watu wengi wanaweza kukuona okay. na umepata emotional breakdown kwa, ji, kwa, sababu, okay. kwa sababu ya stress au kama anything haikuwa na clarification sana lakini mm. nimepata emotional breakdown nikiwa ofisini mm-hmm. nafanya nini in an ideal environment inatakiwa hr angeingilia uh, to provide resources not just after kapata emotional break, breakdown mm-hmm. even before kama sasa zile nilivyosema mm-hmm. lakini kwa vile ndo imeshatokea of course what you have to do is remove yourself yeah. from that situation because again watu wote watakuwa hapo pale kila mtu anakupa advice yake <laughs> without being asked manake sasa sijui nini kimepanda nani kakuona hivi unajua remove yourself from the situation kwa sababu watu wengi wanahisi kama you must now maintain to be strong the moment ile kitu kimepass kwa hiyo anaweza akarudi pale maana kijalazimisha onekane while unaendelea kujiumiza unasikia watu wanakuongelea sijui nini ondoka go home now of course in your if that is not a resource provided by the hr office ni kwako in your own time you have to find help because kupata emotional breakdown kazini it means that whatever has been hurting you is big enough that you can't solve it yourself that's the point of a breakdown ni kwamba tayari ulikuwa umejaribu to solve it or keep it to yourself for the, this whole time paka imefika stage it's like a volcano it erupted so by the, at that point ni kwamba you need help so because you don't have those resources now you can take the time to find those resources yourself if you're watching this show i am a resource yeah. i think richard akupa my contact information we, we are also going a process ya kuunda Tanzania Psychological Association Yes, which I'm part of the board. So, we probably will be coming to you what to a HR <laughs> and hold you down because we are working very closely to the government ku lazimisha muhimu of psychological services in many areas. So, whether it is HR, kwenye health insurance because at this point it is not even considered medical uh, a medical service. It's so it is yani it is still considered like because again ni kama mbasema because there was not that regulation there's many people who claim to be psychologists who do things that this is not the topic the panel for but in any case anytime you have a breakdown in the office remove yourself there's no need to talk to anyone if in in the immediate time there is a friend or someone you feel close to who you trust who is going to come with you and talk to you but remove yourself from the environment that you are in and go to the place that you consider safe whether it is home whether it is to another friend's house to a relative's house and from there you can now figure out how to look for the resources that you need but do not linger trying to to force kwamba ile situation haikuwa hivi ngoja nijieleze there's no need because you already are at a place ambao unahitaji msaada so if that helps i don't wow guys thank you so much thank you all for making time for this session I I'm truly I truly am honored and humbled thank you so much and to Tanzania you will get the profile of each person here on my Instagram account for the whole week it will only be about them so <laughs> <laughs> make it a point if you want the contact details utapata kwenye Instagram page yangu lakini tuendelee kuzungumza hizi mada za HR kwa sababu ni about people and people are at the core of anything we are people and any community is made by the people and how we really live so thank you so much i hope you've learned a lot and keep bringing the questions uh, i'll make sure that they get the questions and answer them again we appreciate i know i know thank me later Asante Rita Talk Show let's talk human resource bye bye bye, bye. <laughs>